Hey. Oh, that's good. That had a new thing. Yeah. It is episode 37 of Alex and Jim <laughs> Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Now just the number. The yeah. number we laugh now. Well, I had to look to see which number it was because we skipped a week because both of us were busy. Right. And uh, I thought, boy, I know it's at least 35. And I was like, oh, it's 37. All right. 37. And I'm probably going to keep doing that. When we're, when we're at like 49, I'm going to go, I mean, we must have done at least 20 of these things. <laughs> You're an underestimator. <laughs> I want to tell you a funny, non-related to what we're talking about, but related to Billy Joel story. What? That's yeah. That's on topic. I'll take it. <laughs> so I was, there's a Billy Joel fan site on uh, Facebook which really is a perfect place for Billy Joel fans because sure. it feels <laughs> modern, but it's actually for old people. Yes. And uh, <laughs> some of the people on there are lovely. Some of the people will get into weird arguments about Elton John. It's all great. Yeah. There's a lot of Elton John resentment. Yeah. The Billy Joel community. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so typical because there's a lot of resentment there but none between Elton John and Billy Joel. Right. Oh, it's all proxy resentment. Yeah. They like each other fine. Sure. They know they're two different entities. And the only thing, the only commonality is the piano. Yeah. And I'm sure when they've chatted, and the truth is both of them grew up as suckers, like people who had trouble fitting in. Yeah, of course. And both of them grew up to be rich, barrel-chested fatties. <laughs> they are. They are squat, little uh, rich guys. Yep. And they both try to figure out how to deal with it. I think Billy Joel's handled that better because he was never expected to be dazzling. <laughs> right. Whereas Elton John now wears like fancy looking outfits that look like drapes now yes because they have to yeah and he'd be better served if he dressed like billy joel he should just really wear sweat track suits yeah you know you could still wear the fun glasses (laughs) yeah a track suit and crazy glasses is a real bingo night look yeah i think the funny thing about funny glasses is Now he's at the point because he's an old man that if he's got crazy glasses, there's going to be a moment when he goes, oh, oh, where are my crazy glasses? I can't see anything without my fun glasses. (laughs) Uh, How do you lose glasses that big? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Has anybody seen my giant star shaped glasses? I left them in the restroom. They're right there. (laughs) Sir, can you describe your glasses? I have the lost and found box here. Ah, yeah, mine are the ones that also light up. Where are those? (laughs) Okay, you're good. (laughs) So, the ones with the fish, the ones with the goldfish in them. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't the nun that was here earlier. Okay. Yeah, they're next to my Molly, which I still have. Um, (laughs) Prescription, though. It's prescription Molly now. Yeah. It's a beta Molly. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, I keep interrupting your Facebook story. But with good things, it's all good. And that's all the show is anyway. Um, (laughs) So there's a lot of nice people. And there was this guy who said he, the initial part of the post was he had been able to go to a restaurant finally to celebrate that because some COVID restrictions were lifted, very exciting. And he went to a Mexican restaurant and there was a mariachi band. Right. And he said to them, they asked him for a request. And he said, well, can you play anything by Billy Joel? And this (laughs) mariachi band played Piano Man. (laughs) And he had recorded it. And it's First, it's fantastic because these guys have a sense of humor about themselves because, you know, they're just a fun 
thought band. Right. And everybody's laughing and singing along, having a good time. And at one point he goes, now Pedro at the bar is a f- friend of mine. <laughs> and I don't know if the guy's name really is Pedro, but it probably is. Good chance. And, and he goes, and he gets me my drinks for free. And, and the other band members go, free drinks. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> oh, the best. Uh, and, uh, and that part's really funny. And then he goes, now the microphone, uh, no, the piano sounds like a carnival. The mariachi band smells like beers. Yeah. That's funny. Right. And everybody's singing along, and it finally dawned on me what the biggest problem is with that song. It's incredible in a bar with dummies drinking yes. and singing along. Yes. It Don't was, let it out of the bar. Yeah, it was never meant to be a stadium song. No. And it, it occurred to me as an example of how it's not a stadium song is... Imagine Queen does We Will Rock You in a, like, uh, unplugged session. <laughs> in a dive bar. Yeah. And how much you would think, pretty sure this is terrible, right? Yeah. 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 Oh. I can it's do that. Man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it also occurred to me that you and I, as individuals and people who exist the way we exist, that song's not for us. Yeah, not we anymore. Don't, we don't, I don't think it ever was. I have spent a lot of time in shitty bars. But you've course. never spent time thinking, I'm enjoying everyone here. Oh, no, no. Yeah, no. And I'm that's... <laughs> I'm waiting that, for someone. <laughs> yeah, that song is for people who are capable of commiserating. Those are the people who are at that bar at two in the afternoon and they all know each other. We, I went to a lot of those bars, certainly in Tucson, also yeah. in LA. Yeah. Where like, you know, I like, there was a time where I drank a lot. Sure. Not counting today, which was also <laughs> a time where I had a couple of drinks. Um, ironic, <laughs> or I guess unironically, I picked a real bad time. <laughs> Uh, but yeah I would go to those bars and I'd get there like earlier than my friends sometimes and it was the four people who were there every night who were always in their 60s at least yeah and they all knew each other and they knew each other well and they loved each other a lot and they looked out for each other as much as they could being drunks Um, and that's who it's for yep that's who Piano Man is for I remember being yep I remember being at a karaoke night and it was fine. We used to like karaoke a lot. We talked about that. I like to make fun of it. I like to take it too serious. I'm both guys at different times. Yeah. There was an old man and he was not sitting next to me, but he was an old man and he was singing a song uh, and it was an old crooner song. You had Mm -hmm. a hat on like a sort of a Bing Crosby kind of hat. Always that guy. And Lord, did he love being heard. And he had a fine voice. He had that kind of voice like dads often have, which was a little bit of a baritone and kind of weathered quality to his voice. We were like, I don't know, this is kind of nice. Yeah. All right. Where was that? Do you remember which joint that was? Um, was it the smog cutter? Where's the smog cutter? It is on Vermont. Then no. All right, fair. No, I think it was. It was that one karaoke bar we would go to that was near Wrigley Field. Oh, Zygmunt's maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicely done. Where I worked as a karaoke host for a while. Did you? I did not know that. I did. Ten bucks an hour and free beer. Oh, wow. Did Did you also get tips? Yes, we'd get tips as well. Um, I also was a de facto bouncer <laughs> because, you know, you had the microphone. So, you, like, hey, you guys back there, stop that. Stuff like that. 
and you're tall like even you can you can be i can take being large because yeah. i was tall yeah and i had baggy shirts on so you're like Man, there might be muscles you don't know <laughs> yeah there there are not there are. <laughs> you know how muscular guys love to do karaoke <laughs> uh, for a living <laughs> that's right but it was a sweet gig I think that's how The Rock got his star, right? They discovered him as a karaoke host. <laughs> that's right. If I'm remembering. Yeah. And they were like, they fired him because nobody else could fit in the bar. Yeah. He would also say, hey, uh, uh, what song you got cooking? He'd say. He'd say that. Or uh, can you smell what I'm singing? <laughs> was, no, wait, what? And it was always that Nirvana song because he'd try to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. Can, can you smell what I'm cooking? It smells like teen spirit. <laughs> yeah, that's what we would do. Yeah. I, I, I'll be, I always tipped him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he killed a guy once who didn't. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> with kindness. Yeah. Killed him with kindness. Yeah, I believe that that guy had sung uh, something by Super Tramp, right? The guy he was mad at. Something by Super Tramp. Oh, the uh, Breakfast in America album? Yeah, I think so. I think it was. Yeah. Do they have another album ever? Super Tramp is my go to joke band. One, I want to just name a band that is so benign. Yeah. And wasn't bad because it wouldn't work for yeah. most of the jokes I'm talking, I'm doing. Now it doesn't work for any of them because no one knows who that is. But. <laughs> You aged out of your reference. Yeah. And this was the first time I used the joke was years ago. A buddy of mine was hit by a bus. And, and unfortunately, he died, which is not, <laughs> oh, it's no. not the funny part. Okay, good. But he was out jogging at the time, and he didn't have any ID. But he has it. The way they identified him, and this is 100% true, was his iPod. Wow. So they were able to figure out through his iPod who he was. And I said... The joke was, I said, it's very sad that he died getting hit by a bus, but I think it's even sadder that the last thing anybody thought about him was, wow, this guy really likes Super Tramp. <laughs> that was that joke. <laughs> that was the last thing. Oh, that is very sad. Yeah, his name, his name was Adam Finley, and anytime I bring the story up, I like to say his name, so his name still exists, and he was an absolutely delightful human being. Of course. So now it's always the way. Yep. So now his name has been said again and it can be remembered that he was a very nice man. Um, Adam Finley. How great is this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I thought that was really funny and I just thought <laughs> Billy Joel should do a bar show if you really and go, okay, I'm going to go bar yeah. show. And it's a little expensive, but you'll get to hear Piano Man correctly. And I'm not doing it on the bigger shows. Yeah. And it's not like he doesn't have a full roster of bar stuff. Lord, he does. The song we're about to talk about is a bar song. It's a bar. It, I thought about that when I was listening to it. And I was like, this would is something you would hear like uh, on a Friday night at the Wooden Nickel. Oh, what, they're having a band. Oh, yep. oh. I'll this, say it again. This would be a good um fabulous thunderbird song <laughs> yes that's what this song is and the song i picked was you picked a real bad time and then there's nothing after that to just the sentence just kind of stops <laughs> for what yeah it doesn't for anything i guess yeah do you know I the love... mavericks do you know the band the mavericks no do yourself a favor um, they, they would do this, they would do it justice. They're very, uh, there's a lot, I guess, along the same lines as the Fabulous Thunderbirds with maybe more of a Latin vibe. Oh, I'm down. I'm down then. So great. I love them. Uh, but yeah, this is very, there is nothing in this song to make you sit up and go, well, he changed music forever. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, he's, he samed it. He's saying <laughs> music. He's <laughs> saying music forever. That reminds me of a dumb joke I made because Ann Coulter uh, came out and just was like, Biden did the right thing in getting out of Afghanistan. People lost their minds. 
Oh yeah. And I just posted, Ann Coulter has gone batshit sane. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, people also didn't read the rest of her comment. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, and Coulter is a terrible person, but I think, unlike a lot of people, I've concluded that it's not all performance. Yeah, she might just be bad. And I kind of respect that more because I think, like, racism is bad, right? We can agree on that. <laughs> yeah. But worse than racism is if you're not racist, but you're willing to use it to your benefit what yeah. other people are if you're willing to go okay well if i can I keep really them... care but a lot of people are racist so i'll do that yeah yeah that's much worse because you can't fix that because ignorance racism those things can be fixed you know education meeting another person homophobia gets cured really easy by meeting a human being yeah but then and, uh duplicitous evil yeah much harder to cure yeah yeah <laughs> there is only one cure and it comes in the barrel of a gun wow see now <laughs> i don't know what this show is about <laughs> uh, like the character though comes, i like the character a lot comes in the barrel of a gun i <laughs> The secret to this secret to this character is a teeth stay together. I want, <laughs> yeah, I want to remake every Clint Eastwood movie with you instead. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that uh, shortish stranger? <laughs> Who seems scared of the horse? <laughs> <laughs> the the big, the bad, and the he's kind of getting fat. So the big bad, and he's kind of let himself go. Uh, a clammy fist full of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so great. Uh, <laughs> we'll I, get know, on. I know you're ask. I know you're asking yourself, does he need a nap? Uh, it's sleepy Harry. <laughs> no. <laughs> So what happened was I went out to dinner with my friend Steve, who's very nice, uh, and I had a couple of Negronis. What's a Negroni? Um, it's a blur. <laughs> I know it's mainly Campari. What I figured out afterwards, or what my friend Steve told me, was like, hey, there's no mixer in that. It's like three kinds of alcohol. Oh. So he's like, they're very, very strong. So I had two of those before he told me that. So yeah, like I said, I picked a real bad time. <laughs> a little bit hammered. Yeah, you had fun though, right? I had fun. I'm still having fun. Yeah. Podcast doesn't make any less sense than it did before. <laughs> so we good. Maybe you picked the perfect time. Maybe this was the best time. That's awesome. <laughs> I love a drink that ends up being stronger than you thought. <laughs> and I knew it after the first one, but it was uh, a nice restaurant and it was raucous. And we're like, it's pouring fucking rain right now. And we're like, sure. Yeah. Have another one. That is such a beautiful thing to, to, to be. That used to be a thing you did all the time. And now the, just the occasional thing is, it's just nice. It's nice. And then tomorrow will be a wreck. <laughs> uh, and there'll be much Advil. Yep, absolutely. Uh, but that's fine. Yeah. Tomorrow that's wasn't going to be much anyway, baby. I <laughs> know <laughs> 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 <No>, again. <laughs> I like that one. Tomorrow's. So you're listening to yourself. Okay, I got it. What's the the double oh so we picked the thing i'll tell you in advance what's dumb about this song it is he uh is doing a blues thing yep and we know already that he doesn't talk like this <laughs> nobody from long island says i ain't the kind yeah 
Yeah, he doesn't. He's doing a character. He's doing a little character who sings blues songs. He doesn't travel over to um, appropriation, so that's good. He sounds right. like a white blues artist. <laughs> yes. So that part is good. He sounds. Yeah. He doesn't like, uh, like an Elton John or something. Like an Elton John, who <laughs> some people say is better. What? What? Facebook. <laughs> Yeah, he does. He does a really fine. It's a fine song. I honestly thought, well, I wouldn't mind hearing this again if it just came up. It doesn't have to be homework. I'd enjoy this. When did it come out? So it's on my lives, I think. Uh huh. Which I don't own. Is that weird? I should own that. Well, <laughs> I think you're okay not owning that. Yeah, my lives is like B sides, right? I think so. Yes, it's like all the different facets of uh, his uh, storied career, which I already have. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to say this is early '80s. This is early enough. I think so, and yeah. it feels '80s to me as well, just as a guess, because it feels like uh, '80s iteration of that kind of a blues artist again fabulous thunderbirds mm -hmm. or when um what's his name yeah there was that little blues revival in the 80s yeah like the thing like the not good bruno who you know from <laughs> yes um not the good bruno which is bruno mars is great we've established that thank you bruno thank you again for listening yeah, that I don't know how that happened. I was very happy about that. And uh, fuck you, other Bruno, for not listening ever. Yeah, never listens to it. It's a tale and, of two Brunos. And yet talks about it incessantly. Huh. Huh. That's so Bruno. In interviews, Bruno. they'll talk, try to talk about his movie, and he goes, well, first, let me badmouth this thing, he'll say. Who even has time for that on a press junket? Yep. Evil Bruno. He That's makes good. time. That's what happens. That's what happens. Yeah, I want to say 80s. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say uh, Stormfront times is because it sounds like a lot of things on Stormfront. Yeah. But that's like late 80s. Uh, yeah. That, that, oh, the picture I have here, by the way, is uh, also tells me it's got to be. 80s ish looking at the picture because it's definitely big fro. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I like this picture too because uh, I know you can't see it, but I like the picture because he's wearing a white collar shirt, but the top bun's undone. Very sexy. Yeah. <laughs> We're looking at the same picture. I bet we are. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. He looks like somebody's mean sister. <laughs> <laughs> really does. Really does. Like you have a cool friend, but his sister is mean. And I understand she's not a looker, but that's not yeah, my sure. fault. It's not my fault. You could have friends. Yeah, I, you're, you are going to be single. That's for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure, you're going to be single. Oh. All right. So here's where we start off. It is absolutely just yeah. a blues riff. That's all that's I going on here. Uh -huh. uh, but in a good way and there's there's a little change in the middle but it fits yeah it's very bridgy in the middle yeah i guess it fits i was relieved to hear it i was like oh, i'm glad it's not going to be just blues a blues sledgehammer all the way through yeah yeah this is honestly a song that if you concentrate on guitar for two months you got this <laughs> you pick up the guitar and you're like, I'm going to start playing guitar. You're like, well, I can do this. You can do a credible job. Yeah, before you even have calluses. Yeah, because you're, <laughs> you're good to go. Yeah. And then I know you're at the rehearsal. You're going to go, is there a second thing I need to do in the song? Oh, no. Oh, great. This is great. See you at the end of the song, everybody. Yeah, this is one of the few songs I'll say lead guitar just as easy as bass which is usually not true usually not true <laughs> this just absolutely is just not 
complicated, but still a fun song. I, I think more or less a song I wouldn't mind hearing if I agree, I would love to hear it in a bar. That's where I would love to hear it most. <laughs> yeah, but barring that. Yeah. There's uh, always your apartment. <laughs> yep, and I can <laughs> drink here, I've done it. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, I ain't the kind to turn away from you when something's on your mind. Uh-huh. But you have to know, you just have to see I'm having my troubles, babe, and they're all too much for me. Um, I I like that a lot because I like that we get right down to what the song's about. Yeah, it's we're really just, starting in the middle of whatever happened. Yeah. Oh, you got something to bitch about? I got it. But just so you know, I haven't had a great day. Right. Then, so neither one of them had a good day. Yeah. And there's a little sarcasm as far as I'm concerned, because at least it's passive aggressively implied. Oh, you know me. I'm not, I don't mind you and your complaints, <laughs> but just so you know, I'm going through some stuff now. I mean, maybe once we could talk about that. Maybe. Maybe it's my turn. Maybe. Oh, it's you. Okay. Yeah. But I like that jump in, and you're right. It's right in the middle of whatever the nonsense was. But here's the thing. Anytime anybody says, don't get me wrong, they're about to be a dick. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, this is like, uh, I mean, he's a dick a lot of, in a lot of songs, but r rarely this immediately. <laughs> you're right. There's usually some buttering up <laughs> before we get to like... Uh, now listen, don't get me wrong. But he starts, don't get me wrong, which just means like, I'm going to say a bad thing and I don't want you to be mad. Yeah. But you should be. Yeah. And don't get me wrong is your clue that you should be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, don't get me wrong. Uh, I love listening to your bullshit, but I had a bad day. I'm like, oh, I, th I don't think I'll get you wrong. I think that's pretty straightforward. I think I fully understand. Not misinterpret that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there's somehow I came, I was under the impression you're being supportive, then I got you wrong. So I, don't <laughs> right. think, I think there's a low chance of me missing this. <laughs> She's seen this movie before. Yeah. He does this every time she complains. <laughs> My problems are worse. Oh, Jesus, we got a cameo. Uh, oh, I love a good cameo. Hold on, let me have my clip. Uh, there. there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, uh, Lottie, don't get me wrong. <laughs> She's having some adjustment issues with the new place. Still? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll take her, you know, a year. <laughs> It'll take her the length of the lease. A friend of mine, his kitty cat got lost one time um, and he was beside himself. He was very sad. And I shared with him a bit of wisdom I know about kitty cats and it helped him. And I said, well, what happens is kitty cats are ridiculously territorial. Yes. To the point that then when they're a little bit out of their natural territory, even by, a, say, a block. Yeah. They get scared. They hide. They don't know what's going on. Yep. A lot of times they find their way back. And this cat did exactly that, which was wonderful. And my friend was like, oh, you were right, Lottie. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you're going down now. Now you're purring. That means oh, you're fine. That was a good cat. Um, I had the same thing. I had a cat before this guy who disappeared for three weeks and then came back super skinny with a broken tail, but came back. If they can, they come back. Yeah. If they don't come back, it's because they can't. Yep. Anyway. Yeah. My turn? Yeah, your turn. You picked a real bad time to spoil my concentration. <laughs> you picked a real bad time to pass along the bad news. Tell me why you try to give me aggravation. 
you picked a real bad time because this man's got the blues. Rude. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> also, what, you'd spoil your concentration? Yeah. You don't really have to focus much on having being in a bad mood. It kind of just happens to you. Yeah, and from what we've seen, he's got that on lock anyway. Yeah, he good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm getting a weather alert. Oh, there was a tornado in New Jersey earlier tonight. Um, you picked a real bad time to pass along the bad news. I would love to know what she's trying to tell him while he's whining. Yeah. Um, I'd like to imagine it's much bigger and her more horrific than his news. Yeah. It's Both of her really? parents died in a murder-suicide. Right. And it's like, babe, you picked a real bad time. But real, tell me why you try to give me aggravation is fighting words. Yeah, that's a jackhole lyric if there ever was one. That's a, that's a, that's yeah. a jerky thing to say. That's, that's two things. One, it's worth mentioning is that is him trying very hard to occupy the headspace of the blues musician. Yes. Because otherwise, this song is about secretly about a domestic abuse situation. <laughs> it's really borderline. Yeah. Because that guy before, oh, listen, I'm in a bad mood. This is like, ah, oh, I'll give you that back of my hand. It's one of those. Yes. Tell me, it's also very clinical. Yeah. Spooky way. Yeah. Tell me why you try to give me aggravation. I would love to know. It's very, <laughs> it's a little sopranos y. Yeah, that's true. And also because this man, this man, also don't don't third person yourself. This man's got the blues. Yeah. And you know what dawns on me too. This is a thing dudes do. I don't know if ladies do this, maybe they do, but it dawns on me too that imagine it's not a domestic abuse situation. Right. But it's a situation where it definitely has the feel of a situation where a guy expects the girl to always be the lovely girl he fell in love with on dates yeah and the one he's ho hopefully he hasn't infantilized her but at the very least he's objectified her personality in a way that you know if she's a bubbly personality he always wants the bubbly personality and if you can't yeah. pass that you end up with three or four divorces oh because then they're never people. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, right. He's assigned her the role of caretaker. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's like, well, now I need care. And he's like, well, I had a bad day. So you're out of luck. Yeah. And also, <laughs> and also I'm going to yell at you. Yeah. For, also, for having a bad day. Yeah. Because that's what you want when you're having, when somebody else is having a bad day. The first thing you should do is let them know that other people's problems are real. Yeah, they love to hear that. Yeah, it solves everything, I'll tell you. Every woman worth her salt will go, oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not upset anymore. Yeah, forget about my problem. I didn't realize you also had a problem. Yeah, I thought I was <laughs> the one who had a problem. <laughs> it made to spoil your concentration. Oh, well, and then that now, devil's advocate, Spoil his concentration. Maybe that's why the song turned out this way. Could uh, oh, could be. He was concentrating on being nice, and she spoiled it. Yeah. The original title of the song: "What a great day." <laughs> what a great day! The blues song. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, that's kind of dope. All right. So now that we'll call chorus. -y. Luckily, the chorus changes a little bit, but why don't you do the next two and then I'll start with chorus. All right. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Again, don't get me wrong. You're not alone. I'd like to help you, <laughs> but I've got problems of my own. 
It's a bitter phase I'm going through. And I can run from strangers, darling, but I just can't hide from you. Hey, uh, hey uh, spoiler, it's not a phase. Yeah, no, it's a 12 album phase. <laughs> um, buddy. It's, yeah, it's a phase in the same way that uh, an individual's lifespan is a phase. I just can't hide from you. You, first of all, you wanted her to listen to your problems. Yeah. Now you're trying to hide from her because she has a problem. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Just don't, this is not how to talk to women or anyone. Yeah, anyone. It's not the right way to talk to anyone necessarily. All right, do your cameo. Aw. And then you go. Good little yeah. kitty. <laughs> We got a system. Yeah, he uh, he is not good at relationships in this song. Whoever this character is, he is not. Yeah. Also kind of fun to say, but I can run from strangers, darling. But <laughs> we're in the mid middle of telling you I'm not going to listen to you, but I'm going to call you darling in the middle of that. Nothing sarcastic about that. Yeah. Worse if it's sincere. <laughs> if you yeah. think you mean it and you're like, oh, this this will be comforting. Yeah, this goes back to your Ann Coulter theory. <laughs> right? Buddy, <laughs> uh, honestly. Get... The other thing about the cat is that uh, she's wet because there's a drip coming from the window in this apartment and she likes to stand under it oh yeah that's two problems yeah so uh you picked a real bad time yeah <laughs> you got this issue with the camera <laughs> can't listen to your bullshit right now <laughs> i've got a drip in the window and this cat and the cat uh, <laughs> yeah oh it's a bitter phase but let's back up though. I'd like to help you. <laughs> yes. Don't get me wrong. You're not alone. Maybe better if she was. At this yeah. Point. Boy, she sure feels you, and I'd like to help you. Just isn't true. It just right. isn't. Yes. Um, that's uh Dr. Phil taught me that. Whenever somebody says, but what they're saying is, forget what I just said. I'm going to tell you what I really feel. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, he's wrong about a lot of things, but he ain't wrong about that one. Unless, unless somebody has just said, what's your favorite part of that lady you just saw? And they say the butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. The exception that proves the rule. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> English is a very weird language. It really is. It's very hard for people to learn. Yeah. They didn't and, grow up with it. And after they've learned it and they use it, they realize we don't use it very much and we use a bunch of other parts of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's very uh, dialectic. Yeah. It's a silly, silly, silly language. I'm giving it up. Uh, <laughs> Back to Esperanto for you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you picked a real bad time to spoil my concentration. Oh, I'm glad we did it this way because, no, it doesn't change. You picked no. a real bad time to pass along the bad news. Tell me why you try to give me aggravation. You picked a real bad time. Oh, and he does change this. And I uh -huh. ain't got time to lose. And, Lord, is that additionally insulting. Yes. You're, not, you're wasting my time with your complaints. <laughs> my valuable, valuable time. Yeah, how dare you have something on your mind? <laughs> <laughs> oh, blues. Yeah. Blues um, in general, not great for ladies, I think. No. And I will say, to go back to what I said earlier, it does work. Lyrically and musically, it does work as a little blues song. Mm -hmm. 
Because you're right. A lot of blues songs, some of the songs are about like this lady has money and that's good. I'm using the money. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And there's a lot of like so and so on the side kind of songs. Sure. And those songs are probably the healthier relationships that on the side relationships. If uh if a song, blue song is about relationship A. <laughs> yeah. Those are not starting good. starting at a deficit. Yeah. Because it's a blues song. Yeah, so. honestly, the best relationship I've heard anybody have with somebody in a blues song was with uh Lucille the guitar. Had a good relationship with Lucille. Ah. Uh, saved her from a fire. It's funny that you mention Lucille because after listening to this song, I kept thinking of the song Lucille, um, which uh, has the lyric, you picked a real, you picked a fine time to leave me. Lucille, yeah. Yeah. Four hungry children and a crop in the field. It's we talked about this. Song. Yeah, we talked about it before and I still don't know the answer to, was this intentionally hilarious? <laughs> I want to think so, but I want always want to give Kenny credit. Yeah, it probably isn't due. I don't know. I don't know because you go. I don't think Coward of the County was hilarious, but I don't think he meant it to be. Exactly, and that's what makes me think maybe he didn't mean this either. Because Coward of the County is just very over the. First of all, it's nice that those guys eventually get their ass kicked. <laughs> eventually afterwards yeah after they did prevent anything no oh yeah did you ever watch the movie oh thank god i did not yeah it's i believe made for tv there was a couple kenny rogers inspired inspired movies for tv oh sure there one was the them, gambler <laughs> yeah and one of them is coward of the county oh Wow. Uh, what a weird they, time for TV. Yeah. I bet there was somebody who was like, can we write an Islands in the Stream song movie? We got an Islands in the Stream movie in our sleeves? Now, come on. I know you're in charge, but you keep showing up drunk with Kenny Rogers scripts. <laughs> also, if it's a stream, it's not big enough for Islands. Yeah. Well, that's what it could be about. No, it couldn't. <laughs> No. <laughs> Sell it over at Sci-Fi. <laughs> and they did. No, they I did. hope they did. It's in season seven now. Now, here's what they do. Here's what he does here. This is where we have a musical change. Oh, uh, yeah. This is where uh, it's still blues, I guess. It is, yeah. It's slowly melting. It kind of, yeah, it gets Cheerier. a little... It's a slick little turn, but it's not drastic. Yes, agree. I think it works. So, well, it works for me. <laughs> Isn't that all that matters? Um, ain't it the truth when they say all you need is love, but all you want is forgiveness? Wait, I have different lyrics. Where are you? Oh, did I? Uh... You jumped. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, let me go back. Time to lose. Ain't it the truth? This is a different ain't it the truth. <laughs> yeah. Geez, how many drinks did I have? <laughs> ain't it the truth when they say that the only thing worth dying for is our freedom? Oh. Ain't it the proof that someday we will all be lying on our backs free at last from income tax? <laughs> weird <laughs> yeah well uh, maybe a clue to what he's upset about maybe he is upset about money it could be it could be it is weird to bring death into it yeah when you're lilting bridge wow um, i think it's very weird and uh right wing yeah only thing worth dying for is our freedom. There's some irony in there. Yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, income tax is the thing that <laughs> makes you go, wait, what is this song? Well, we, it's funny how many like, I mean, the Beatles were very yeah. mad about taxes. Yeah, the tax man. You do hear about the tax man a lot in yeah. those songs. Uh, and the government. Yeah. The, <laughs> free at last from income tax. Which is kind of funny when you think about like, if you're really a struggling person, like a struggling artist, income tax ain't your issue. Not a problem. And it's if not- you're a rich rock star. Yeah. You might accidentally not know what a blues guy might be concerned about. <laughs> All right, don't you get me wrong, the mood won't last. And I'll be myself again as soon as this pain is passed. Hard line in the sand, that also isn't true. No, this is yourself. Yeah. You're being yourself now. When he said, I'd love to listen to you, he wasn't, no, he he doesn't want to listen to you. And when he says, I'm going to be myself again, he just, he said that a lot in a lot <laughs> yeah. of conversations. And that wasn't me, babe. Yeah. You know that time when he woke up at like 11 and decided to take you to breakfast and it was nice? That wasn't him. Yeah, no, that's, that's cool. performative. That keeps you around. Yeah. To get yelled at more. Well, he was having a good day for no goddamn reason that you can control or predict yeah (laughs) i like this next lyric and then it gets into your turn but and i'm standing here don't ask me how (laughs) (laughs) so is he hammered is he i'm wow i'm is it that or does don't ask me how refer to the next line Oh, it could be, yeah. I just like, and I'm standing here. I don't know how I got here. (laughs) Man, I man, I don't. What did I take? I'll make make it up to you someday. Now, this is relatively a little more honest than I'll be myself again. Hmm. It's I'll make it up to you someday, but not right now. Yeah, you're gonna be that someday is. You know when that someday is coming? I'll tell you when that someday is coming. When you sign those papers, that's when. They're... That's when. Yeah, that's when you'll be happy again. Get out! Wow. Um, I, I, I'll say the hilarious lyrics. I kind of love them for the ridiculousness of it. <laughs> it's. Uh, uh, there are a lot of blues songs that basically are like. I am sad, and a lot of bad things happen to me, and I'm sad. Uh, there's not very many where they're like, I'm sad, and leave me alone. <laughs> We're both sad, but shut up. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to, I have the microphone, so it's about me. Um, I would love to know what's going on with her. Yeah. I'm more interested in her than he is. That's uh, true. And uh, also, he's not helping his case because we don't know what his problem is, aside from taxes. Taxes. He's got a problem with the taxes. Everyone gets a little bummed around tax time, but it's mostly about having to do the paperwork. It's not about, you know, like, oh, well, almost everybody gets like a refund, right? Yeah. Or you break even or maybe you owe a few bucks. But uh, see, it hardly seems worth uh, trashing your relationship over. <laughs> uh, I have to wait six weeks. Ah, uh, yeah. I bet, I bet a lot of musicians, in their defense, probably, or in his defense, probably do that thing where, because of the way they earn their money, they end up paying most of their taxes at the end. <laughs> And if, <laughs> and if you're terrible with money, oh, you don't have your W 2s. That ain't for you. Yeah, you got to be on top of it. Because then, because what you're supposed to have done is done, all right, I made a million or whatever dollars last year. 
I set aside this money for taxes. Oh, I didn't. Okay. So the next, uh, so the next concert, I don't make any money. Well, you did, you made the money, but you're going to have. <laughs> yeah. I want more Coke. and <laughs> So I got to wait for that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. You gotta... Have your accountant see. The other thing is we know his financial problems have nothing to do with taxes. Yeah. You just hired criminals and they stole your money. Yeah, good advice, by the way, is don't hire criminals. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're from a Long Island and you just hire people you know, yeah. You hired criminals. <laughs> it's a very good chance. Yeah. Anytime you're like, my brother-in-law is my the only thing that should happen next is the words brother-in-law. Yeah. My sister's sex partner. That's that's acceptable. <laughs> but like, oh, my brother-in-law is my realtor. Like, oh yeah, then you are poor now. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. He got you. Is my dentist. Well, goodbye to your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> your brother-in-law is good for one thing, and that's fucking your sister. That's right. <laughs> you heard it here. Yep. Most recent. Most I was gonna say not first, because that's been said. That's been that's been said in a toast. So. <laughs> uh, that was a great wedding. <laughs> it really was. Hey, uh, you picked a real bad time to spoil my concentration. You picked a real bad time to pass along the bad news. You picked a you caused a real hard line to invade my isolation. Oh, that's weird. Mm, that's real weird. He picked a real bad time because this man's got the blues. You caused a real hard line to invade my isolation. Was this written by like a bot? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you caused a real hard line means. So <laughs> the only thing I can imagine is that the argument that you and I have never heard and the problem she, we've never heard her side of this. I've just got to imagine this argument escalated and she demanded to be heard. Because she's like, I know you got your problems, but I was the first person who came in the room to talk to you. Before you even brought up, you had problems. Mm -hmm. so she's not immediately going, oh, you have problems? Cool. I'll make dinner. You enjoy your problems. She <laughs> wants to be heard. So she's drawing a real hard line. Now, I say that, and I'd like to believe that's true, other than that, Wow, what a clunky sentence. I think that's what it comes down to. He wrote a real clunky sentence that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. The only thing that's cool is uh, the alliteration of invade and isolation. Yeah. Um, which he only picked because uh, it rhymes with concentration. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to leave that behind. Ain't it the truth when they say, all you need is love, but all you want is forgiveness. Ain't it the proof that someday even love will not provide for man the way that life insurance can? On an all new dateline. He's going to kill her? Hey, he's going to kill her and use the life insurance money to pay for his taxes? Right. Uh, I listen, oh. tax man. I'm gonna pay my debt, but first, me and my lovely lady are gonna take a boat ride. Yeah, yeah, a good late night boat ride. <laughs> me and my wife and my cinder blocks. You always got to bring your cinder blocks. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want the discovery too early. Let the current do its work. Yeah, oh, wow. I mean, there is a proud history in blues and especially bluegrass of murdering your spouse. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know if that's what he's going for, but it is very sinister to bring up life insurance when you're fighting. Yeah. And it's fun. It's fun, by the way, that we follow it's fun. a reference, a Beatles reference mm -hmm. that, you know, that was part of your trivia question, too, by that's the way. That's right. Yeah. All you need is love. That Keeps little laugh. Yeah. Truly a great song, and uh, it's a funny way to use it, too. I will give him credit for this. It's a funny way to use it yes. to immediately invalidate it. <laughs> yes. Um, also, is it an expression to say all you need is love, but all you want is forgiveness? I've never heard that. No. <laughs> no it's nobody, nobody has ever expressed that thought. But then it's very funny to me to say, like, ain't it true how they say and then say a thing that no one says? Yes. Ain't it true what they say that someday you'll ride a rocket ship to the middle of a pudding patch? Huh? <laughs> no. Who says that? I mean, I, you and my uncle, that's who, the only people I know who say that. He's off his meds. <laughs> Mike Berbiglia has a bit about that where he talks about his parents would say phrases that he assumed were phrases, but then <laughs> were. it's a pretty good bit. Anybody who wants to check out Mike Birbiglia, I'll put, I'll, that's who I'll link to this week. Yeah, link him up. He's a nice boy. Have you ever met him? I have, yeah. I sort of know him. Yeah, because I know he used to staff write, didn't he, before stand-up? Uh, I think so, before my time. I, I know he... Him through Seth. Because I think he wrote for the Gotham Awards because he has a pretty funny story about that. <laughs> That's worth seeing too. Um, where it starts, he starts out a special saying something that actually kind of made me teary almost in a way. He just starts out explaining how I love jokes. Yes. Great. And it's wonderful how it leads in. And then that has the joke where he goes, see, you're the joke later that does that thing yeah but i won't tell any of his jokes because i hate that you watch him he'll do the jokes he'll do the jokes he's very good yeah um man yeah the sinister as hell though this thing although i will say uh that little couplet at the end is pretty great even love will not provide for man the way that life insurance can <laughs> Yes, written well. That's a nice. Love is not a. It's good, but it doesn't provide the same way a, a lump sum provides. Yeah, that's nice. Freestanding, it's nice. Yep. After yelling at your girlfriend for eight uh, stanzas, a little spooky. And it's really spooky if you consider if he has life insurance on her. And he's Billy Joel with a bunch of money. <laughs> then that is kind of a, yeah. You went out of your way. Yeah. that. But hey, you're damn right. That really is a good lyric. And it's something I often think. Like, I like the song, All You Need Is Love. And I hear it sometimes when I'm in a particular mood. And I'll think, yeah, that ain't true. Yeah. It's it nice. Yeah. But you need uh, food and shelter. Yeah. Yeah, you need so many more things than that. <laughs> it's a great start. Yeah. But if you got love, you got a solid foundation. You're familiar now, with... Get a house. Yeah. <laughs> You're familiar with Christopher Hitchens, of course. Of course. Complicated individual. I happen to enjoy a lot of his essays. Don't agree with no. everything. Sure. But one of the things he takes the New Testament to task for is when Jesus says, look at the flowers. They're dressed nice. Look at the animals. They have everything they need and they don't even work for it. Don't mm -hmm. worry about tomorrow. And yeah. he makes the point that that's a bad moral lesson. And I'd go even further. Uh, not even true because the animals actually work their asses off to get a little bit of food to survive. Yes, and they might get killed at any moment by a different animal. Yeah, and the flowers are doing a process to survive. It's not free. Yeah. They're not, yes, they're not pretty for you. 
It's for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> this is for me. Yeah. <laughs> to live. Yeah. And I'm not now you're making the joke part, but just let's pure science. It they're spending energy. <laughs> it's not free. And it's to propagate their little species. Yeah. Not just to look pretty for your consumption. <laughs> They're trying to attract bees and moths to pollinate. Yeah, yeah and if that don't it's happen... Not about you, Jesus. <laughs> so I think the real message here is, in this blue song, is Billy Joel's coming out against Jesus. Yeah, it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. My, my dumb computer. All right, you well, you get the last one, too, because this is your chorus. Same old thing. You picked a real bad time to spoil my concentration. You picked a real bad time to pass along the bad news. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Why are you trying to give me aggravation? You picked a real bad time because this man's got the blues. Yeah. Tell me, tell me, tell me. That's right before the boat ride. I was right before. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I know we got a hundred different projects for different podcasts. Here's sure. another side project for a, a cover band we're going to do. Uh -huh. And the, the premise is we don't bother to learn to play instruments. I like it so far. We don't bother. I'm lead singer. So great. So that's already problematic. <laughs> we cover Huey Lewis. And it's called The Bad News. I like it. So come to the show. We told you this is going to be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so you have no excuse to not enjoy it. I really did, by the way, have a brilliant idea. For, yeah, I really did have a brilliant idea for a cover band that I could never get enough people interested in. I wanted to cover Nirvana. Uh -huh. but I wanted to, us to all buy those kid instruments at Toys R Us. Right. With they're all more or less plastic and the drums that barely make any noise. Because I was just picturing the beginning of it going tick, 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 tick. tick. Just very funny to me. <laughs> and to let you know the kind of person I am, I tried to talk people into doing this. Oh, I, I believe really it. did. I made an effort. Uh and there every are. single person was like, that's really a great idea. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> they said to you, uh, you picked a real bad time. That's right. Maybe that's <laughs> what this is about. Is that what this is about? Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's all coming full circle. So it's a good song. And now I've blanked. I think it just ends properly, not a fade out, right? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Okay. Probably. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> Is that good expertise. And I listen to it quite a lot too, because I put it on sometimes what I'll do for the, the show is I'll just put it on in my car. Uh-huh. Uh, and it'll just be on repeat for the trip. Sure. And if, and sometimes I'll have to make a quick stop and go, no, that's enough of that. But sometimes <laughs> if it's a short enough trip, and this was fine, it's 20, 30 minutes. So this was like a B-side on a 45 or something I back think when they had yeah. those yeah. or a, a K single. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> what a fucking landfill that was. Yeah, what a dumb use of a format because it had to be expensive and you're like, you know, you could just put a couple more songs on here. There's some plastic that will never dissolve into the earth. Do you have... Cassette. You get to hear one song that's not good. Do you have cassette tapes you haven't thrown away? Yes. How come? That's a fine question. I don't know. Yeah. I think some of them are mixes, and I keep thinking, like, oh, I'll go to a thrift store one day and buy a tape player. Yeah. And then you don't. You never do that. Yeah. I have, I know, I know this because I just moved. So I found my little shoebox full of old cassettes, mostly not labeled. Yeah. Some of them are store-bought, like 
Buddy Holly's greatest hits. <laughs> and I know I'm like, those are available. Anytime I want to hear any of those songs, yeah. I don't need this. Yeah. But I bought it. And I, I'm not getting the money back, so I'll keep it the fucking tape. Yeah, yeah we even yeah. aged past the chance when we could have got 30 cents for them somewhere. Oh, yeah. You keep thinking, like, well, maybe I'll just keep waiting and it'll go back up. <laughs> like, no, that's never happening because we're dissolving into a uh, global crisis. Yeah. Records in your uh, Peggy Sue. Records did cassettes that never were going to because it was always a records were an art form, and then cassettes were just another way to get a thing. But the delivery system was not part of the art. No, it was the opposite. Yeah, a really small album cover, and you had to fold out the lyric thing. Yep. Also, they break immediately. Yeah. If you try to play them in your car, your car eats your tape. How many times did we go through that? Yeah. yeah. It's better now. They fixed it. Throw yeah. the shit out. So, yeah, we could throw those away. I have like four shoe boxes full of this nonsense. Yeah. Some of them, some of them I know we would like to transfer to something because it'll be like a tape recording of Mary Jo performing and merrily we roll along or something like that yeah and even then i'm like but are we are we yeah and then what you listen to it yeah yeah, yeah that's me all right <laughs> i can also sing this right now if you want yeah i'm still alive and better sing it better, better. yeah i got better at singing i, from when I, I was 20 tell you a quick thing about something that happened to mary joe at the doctor because it almost never happens to anybody ever great she went to the doctor and the doctor said i think it might be b12 i'm going to give you a b12 shot it solved everything whoa that does not happen that does not happen her shoulder pain went away Holy shit, I'm going to take some 12 right after this. She lost weight. Ha. Huh. She is more fun to talk to again. <laughs> Holy shit. She enjoys her meals. Wow. She's, she's always been kind of funny. She's funnier than ever. <laughs> she forgave somebody she'd been mad at for a long time. Oh, thank God. Oh. B12. B12, everybody. Wow. Absurd. I've never been to a doctor and they nailed it. So I was like, no. oh, cool. Yeah, you hear those stories once in a while. We're like, oh, I had a thing and they fixed it. I'm like, yeah. no, that never. I say I have a thing and they say, what do they say? Keep an eye on it. Yeah. Like, okay. Here's the other story you hear that's happened to my sister. Oh, the doctor treated me for a thing. It was the wrong thing. Yeah, it turned out to be a different thing. Because there's more than one thing. That's the problem with being a doctor. It's the problem with being a person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Too many fucking things. There's, hey, and you picked a real bad time because I got a thing. So. <laughs> now I'm going to show you this picture. Okay, I think I know what's happening at least. Yeah. Or at least I know what is rumored to have happened. That is the Met Gala. Yeah. Where supposedly Jason Derulo fell down the stairs. Yes, that's right. That was somebody some, phone. I think there's some debate about whether or not it was Jason Derulo. Yeah, that's where the debate lies. But everybody's pretty solid <laughs> at the dude's falling downstairs yeah uh because everyone goes south every now and then <laughs> yeah uh, well that's true <laughs> it's true it's true but now here's what i want you to do alex yes i want you to put yourself in that guy's headspace uh -huh. the guy falling yeah how that probably feels 
oh, it's got to be very disorienting. Sure. And embarrassing. Embarrassing is what I would feel like. Yeah. You'd feel like a fool. Yeah. Like a fucking fool. Man, no, but great. <laughs> yeah, man, you'd feel like a specific kind of fool. Oh, like an upside down fool? Well, I'll tell you what. I've fallen. I've tripped and I felt that way. I bet you have. Sure. So, I mean, I, I might even tell that guy to comfort him because I'm like, don't feel like a fool. Yeah, I might even tell him that, you know, all of us go through something like this. Yeah. Ain't no crime. <laughs> <laughs> so you're Everybody not trying to get that way sometimes. Well, it's very much more about the fall, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it hurts. I bet he thinks back to that moment. Oh, I wish I hadn't worn these shoes. Yeah. You would say. But you know what? It's just one, <laughs> one time in a set of experiences that comprises uh -huh. his going through this experience <laughs> of living. Yeah. Just uh, <laughs> a once in your life. You're a, you're a fool at uh, once. Oh, yeah. God damn it. Yeah, you're a fool and you're doing exactly what he's doing. Although <laughs> you could also use it metaphorically, but. Oh, head over heels, you're falling head over heels. Well, that's the way people use that metaphor, but mainly the embarrassment. <laughs> what is that? You know, it's it's how you feel. You feel it. Yeah, it's shame. Yeah. Uh, I feel, uh, oh God. You know, he, he, he fell. What else did he, could he have done? He fell. He fell. He, he tumbled. <laughs> right? He Took did. a tumble. He absolutely tumbled. <laughs> like, what if it was happening right now? What uh -huh. were you doing? Tumbling. That's right. Why can't I find it? It's it's well, and it's very close. It's not quite tumbling. It's uh -huh. super close. It's, you're Tumble. within a letter. What? Yeah, it's not. It's he's not quite. He's tumbling. He's. Is he bumbling? Um, tumbling's yeah. correct. There's more to it. There's more to it. Like there's one letter more to it. <laughs> Brumbling. <laughs> He's a tumbling. He's a rumbling, bumbling. This letter often account accompanies this the first letter of tumbling. <laughs> Trumbling? No. No, I'm lost. Um he probably feels pretty ridiculous or silly, foolish. Or, yeah. <laughs> Foolish. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's a tumbling fool. I'll t he'll tumble for you. He That's is a different guy. Tumbling fool or uh bumbling fool. Uh fucking fucking fool. At this particular juncture in his life, he yep. feels that way. A young, tumbling, <laughs> middle-aged fool. We all feel that way. We all feel like a Tumbling. <laughs> Not tumbling. Not tumbling. Uh, but troubling. A thumbling. <laughs> oh, man. Um, be before the T. Uh huh. Just one letter. A stumbling fool. He's stumbling. Yeah. It's a, he's a stumbling fool. Or he feels that way anyway. Like a stumbling fool. Yeah. And we all feel that way sometimes. Especially during Christmas in Fallujah. <laughs> no? <laughs> Damn it. I'll tell you that 
you probably have felt this way, but it's all right. Uh, you're going to be fine. We all feel that way, but you're going to be just fine. Yeah, ain't no crime. <laughs> and whatever you do, don't <laughs> kill yourself. <laughs> what? And whatever you do, don't kill yourself. Oh, no. That's good advice. Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm blank. Oh, really? Well. I'm, I'm two Negronis to the wind. Well, I will tell you that there will be times in your life where you'll be feeling like a stumbling fool. But hold on. Oh, boy. Because <laughs> oh. something's uh, coming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a bonus track on the Greatest Hits album. That's absolutely right. That is where you'll find this. That is where you'll find this. And it's not the other one. It's the one. And he's got the trench coat and the little hat. It's not the first one. It's the... <laughs> <laughs> it's your second wind there you go <laughs> oh that was too easy <laughs> oh, I, I, don't know. Wind. I don't know if we make this a rule that you always have to have one or two drinks before this part because it's so funny <laughs> it's so frustrating yeah. oh yeah, I, there's going to be come a time like, all right, he's a man on a, on a piano. Oh, uh, <laughs> is this an Elton John song? Oh, there's going to be times in your life when you be. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can't even think of how the song goes. Whoa, it's one of his more poppy songs. So I know yeah, yeah. we've chatted about, I believe we did an episode about this. Did we do second wind? I think we did. I feel like it came up before, but I don't think we did it. Not. Second wind, lyrics. Nope, that's a whole different performer. Do you find that happens a lot when you're trying to look up lyrics? Yes. It'll be uh, some uh, folk artist who has a song with the same title. Well, this is your only human, comma, second wind. <laughs> you're only you're having a hard time yeah literally you don't feel so good yeah he does the thing with good he does that a little bit and it's blues thing. <laughs> uh, you better believe there'll be times it, yep yep god damn it and that's good advice for this guy good advice for all of us especially me right now because i feel like a stumbling fool <laughs> How many times, by the way, have people had to give that advice to Joe Biden? Oh, yeah. Just uh, listen, we all fall down. Not that much. And not usually up. <laughs> that was something. Yeah. You want to look on the bright side? Hey, I got a trivia question. Oh, I love me some trivia. You know that about me. That's <laughs> trivia. Does Jim love trivia? Yes, he does. No, yeah, there you go. The bonus On to the next round. <laughs> that one right. This could be a multi-layered one if you want. Um, the album An Innocent Man, favorite album of yours, I think. One of them, yeah. Um, there is uh, another person credited as a songwriter besides Billy Joel, a uh, famous classical composer is also listed. Oh. I'm gonna say uh, Wolfgang Mozart. No, but you're real close. Okay. I don't know if you're that close uh, time-wise, but fame-wise, you're right on point. Uh, Beethoven? Ludwig von Beethoven is uh, credited as a songwriter under the name L.V. Beethoven, <laughs> which is great. Um, That's legit. Layer, funny. So layer two of the question is what song? Okay. Okay, wow. It's not, it ain't Uptown Girl. It's not Uptown Girl, that's correct. Nine to go. <laughs> <laughs> I think. It turns out to be, no, no, Easy Money's 
it turns out to be easy money. I'll be so happy, but there's no way. <laughs> it's not easy money. Okay. Um, it is a song you forgot was on this album. Not a hit. Wow. Oh, um, not tell her about it. Nope. Seven to go. Yeah. I mean, tell her about it is clearly Mozart, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, goodness. All right. Um, well, I don't even have a reasonable guess. What was it? <laughs> uh, the song is called This Night. Oh, I would not have gotten that. You're right. I forgot it was on there. The lovely, pretty song. Yeah. And the chorus of it is note for note from a Beethoven sonata. Oh. It has been used in other songs, too. That is not part of the question. Because you can just do that, of course. Layer three, if you're interested, the song This Night, uh, he wrote about a short relationship with a supermodel. Oh. And what supermodel? I, because I like Billy Joel, I'm mm -hmm. going to call Kathy Ireland. <laughs> Don't you wish it was? Yeah. She's lovely. Yeah. But no. You think, quick side note about Kathy Ireland. She seems like the nicest person in the world. I got nothing to go on, but I agree. Who never, never should be given words to say in front of a camera. <laughs> it's not... That's which, in fairness, is true of 99% of the world. Yeah, she, she's a bad actress. Sure. The thing I saw her in where she played, she played a great part in some movie. I think it's, an, it's a sci-fi movie where she literally was hot lady in glasses at library who you don't know is hot. <laughs> right. And that was great. And she's, I think, one of the most beautiful beings to ever live agreed um, but it's not fair. kathy ireland all right so i'm gonna say um <laughs> i'm gonna say grace jones oh look it at you too much for him very woke of you nope oh. um i'll give you one more okay very famous uh oh um Mole? Very famous when he was very famous. Uh, mole? Um, she has a mole, but it's not Cindy Crawford. It's not Cindy Crawford. Okay. Uh, Twiggy? <laughs> <laughs> Elle McPherson. Elle McPherson. Briefly dated Elle McPherson, apparently. Ah, good for you, Billy Joel. That's fantastic. Yeah. Hey, and you get extra credit for not immediately trying to marry her. Yes, nicely done. Unless he did. <laughs> and that's why it's a relationship. We dated for a month and then he had proposed to me and I was like, all right. <laughs> all right, bud. That's enough. Ah, that's, that's fantastic trivia. Wow, El McPherson. Yeah, God bless. Man. You know, there'll be some stinkers on the albums, but sometimes you'll find a song like this where you're like, no, I like this one, even though I hadn't heard it in a long time. And then it's you a nice know, one. And then there'll be ridiculous things in his relationships. And then you find <laughs> El McPherson. You're like, all right. You nailed that one. I hope you well, I hope you did. But regardless, that was a good date. <laughs> it was a it was a good date. Yeah. I literally even if you sat across from her. Yeah. What do you want? Even if it was one of those weird things, you're like, you dated Elle McPherson, that must have been amazing. He's like, eh, no chemistry. We had a nice dinner and we had nothing to talk about. That was nice. It was nice. <laughs> she's nice. She's nice. I hope she's happy. <laughs> is. I got to, once upon a time, have dinner across from Cameron Diaz and talk to her for a long time about marine biology. Uh, and it was a delight. Brad. It, there's something very nice about having dinner across from an extremely beautiful woman. And she's tremendously charming. Right? She's very charming and very she's interested in deep sea creatures <laughs> in a hilarious way. That's great. Yeah, she's, she's pretty self-aware too. She's 
down to the yeah. personal mockery. Yep. You have to appreciate it. Yep. That is what you need in, in a, any person. Yes. And then a hot lady, you're like, cool. So I bet you she grew into her hotness. So she had normalcy as a kid. Yeah. She's so probably she looked, one of those uh, like, oh, I was awkward in high school. And, but it's true. She yeah. probably was. But I bet you she wasn't too awkward because she, you know what I mean? Like, because there's the people who were just, yeah, I was crazy ugly and then I blossomed and didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. She had friends. <laughs> yeah, she had friends. Yeah. She can talk to people. She's not a monster. Yeah. I remember in grade school, there was this girl who was really tall. Her name was Tammy. And like grade school, she was five foot something. Great. So she had no hope of any being treated anywhere. And I'm like, yeah, I bet you she's stone cold, beautiful, and has had problems adjusting to that. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I don't know. But she was very uh, nice. And if you're out there, I know she also listens to the show. I want to tell you, I was just insecure. She knew that. Yeah. Yeah. She probably did. <laughs> Hey, it's uh, almost 10 o'clock. <laughs> <It's very funny. laughs> uh, we do go on. Yeah, we do. Lord, uh, we do. It's an hour 37 minutes in this episode. <laughs> it really makes me laugh. You know, it's right, though, because we did it on purpose, hour 37, because it's episode 37. Yes. And uh, the other bonus is I'm sober again. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now a recovering alcoholic. We'll <laughs> um, do that to a person. <laughs> um, to make up for it, I think uh, next week or whenever we can manage, uh, we should do a little song called uh, Where's the Orchestra? Oh, awesome. Which I think is on Nylon Curtain. We uh, have said before that he, Billy Joel, is uh, musical theater for straight people. And that song proves it. <laughs> that is fantastic. All right, where's the orchestra? We'll listen to that next week. Um, I, thanks, everybody, for... I hope you enjoyed all of the, all the stuff we do. <laughs> if anybody, if you made it this far... Just write the word uh, lavender in the comments. I'll be very happy with that. All right. See you next week, everybody. <laughs>